Great, so welcome everybody. Um, this is the first of what I hope to be like a weekly edition of just kind of going through and it's not really like a how-to of, um, you know, editing kind of within Photoshop. It's, it's just um, how I edit my photos and, and how I react to all of the different, um, different photos. So, you know, it's not a cookie cutter um, editing technique that I use. Uh, it's just, again, a bunch of different techniques depending on the individual photo. So I have a whole bunch here in my two edit copies. I went through all of my, um, they're not open on here, but all of my crazy um, NEF um, folders. Um, so this is fall 21 here, and I have, uh, still loading here, um, 2100 um, ish photos so again I just kind of went through all of my NEF folders and this is just fall or sorry even just part of fall of 21 um, just kind of getting out so I went through and just sorted through my external hard drives and pulled off um, you know some um, some images that I like and I was just going through for a lot of P uh, or sorry uh, panoramics so you'll, there's a, there is quite a bit of panoramics in here, um, but again, I'm just going to kind of go through and um, edit some older photos that I took again over the past couple of years. These are all shot with my Nikon D80, um, or sorry, D850. I started off with a D80, um, and again, uh, I, I usually shoot with the Tamron, um, and I usually shoot um, panos. So I think what I might do here is maybe move. I don't know if I want to do a sunset or maybe you want to do more of a Milky Way or maybe even a pano, maybe something like this. Actually, this looks really nice. And it, it puts us in the mood for kind of um, the winter time here. So a lot of times when I shoot, I shoot more than one image. Um, I'm going to create a separate video and refer everybody back to that video when I go through my editing. because so I'm just going to go through, again, again, some of my images and just kind of go through the process of, of a lot of the different ways that I shoot. Um, and I never shoot just one image. Uh, it'll always be, um, you know, either panoramic or vertical or, or um, horizontal panoramic. Um, and then different images for focus stacking and then different images for exposure blending as well. So there's lots of different, uh, you know, I never just go in with one one individual photo. So it'd be these three. Um, again, usually what I do is open it up up here in Bridge and, and, and start having a look at um, what the image looks like, which ones are in focus. So this one here, it's a little bit dimmer, um, but it looks like everything's in pretty good focus here. I don't know if I really changed my focus stack too much for this one. It looks pretty good focus in the background. And that's the beauty about shooting with um, with the super wide angle lenses. Unless something's really, really close in my foreground, then I don't, um, you know, I don't, I don't usually find there's too much of uh, an issue with, um, yeah, this is a really nice cloud. So I got to clone some stuff out of here. But again, I don't, I don't find there's an issue with focus. Again, unless it's really close. If I have something that's really close, then I'll make sure I do my focus blend, focus stack. So it doesn't really look like this is too much of a focus issue. So here, these are all in focus. So I'm just going to look at them as, um, Look at the full screen again here, just just for brightness. Um, so yeah, I'll probably. So which one's close with this? Let's go Clan Zero again to that. Bring that out. So I'm in camera raw right now. I love shooting raw. Um, it's the way to go. I'm just kind of bouncing around. I'll probably end up using these three. Uh, this one here is just a little bit too dark, and I don't think I need this. I think this one here has enough detail across my sky to use for my my horizon and my sky. Um, and then I'm just looking for images that are a little bit brighter. So it's it's it always is. It's nicer to darken a brighter image than it is to um, try to brighten up an image that's too dark. Um, whenever you brighten an image that's too dark, you end up it ends up getting noisy and gritty, um, usually. Um, so again, just probably end up with these two and this one. So what I usually do here is I just do Command A, and then again, um, I, I really like these um, profile corrections. So the, these are already loaded up here, where it's my Tamron uh, 15 to 30, and then there's a good, uh, decent profile correction kind of going on there. And sometimes if I'm shooting stars or if I zoom in on a light source and I notice that there's some chromatic aberration, um, then I'll come in and maybe kind of tweak that a little bit. Um, kind of within actually I don't think that sky which one is this it's not this one is it it is this one 
actually, I think I might just be zoomed in too far. Uh, sorry, I just want to check. I want to see my focus here. Focus is key. It really is. It's it's um, you want to make sure that your image is yeah okay. I think I was just zooming in too far. Again, you want to make sure that your images are are nice and in focus. So optics is usually the first one. I'll I'll go and manually correct some of the um, defringing or the chromatic aberration um, a little bit if I find that there is some. And then usually what I'll do is I'll just zoom in on those areas that have light light up against dark, um, so horizon edges or bright um, bright lights um, kind of within. Then I'll go in in my detail. I usually take the sharpening off. I don't like those preset, um, and I should actually create a new preset where all this stuff is already done. Uh, but again, it's just a habit that I have and I get into. Um, I'm horrible at creating presets. Um, I just kind of get into the habit of just like clicking and going through the, the same kind of motions. And that's usually like my cookie cutter thing, like, if, like I was talking about. Those are the things that I go and I do pretty much no matter what the image is. Uh, um, and again, my, my optics is a little bit different depending on what I'm doing there. Um, so again, I'll have a look now. I'll have a look at the individual image and, and see if I need to make any adjustments here. So my sky image, for instance, this is what I'm going to use for my sky. And I'll more than likely blend it with this one. So I'm going to I'll blend these two together or, or let Photoshop do it. Actually, I'll probably do it manually. So these are really close in exposure, so I'll edit those the same. And the reason I edit them the same is when I go to blend them together, I don't want there to be a really big exposure difference so that I'm blending my base layers um, and kind of creating a vertical panoramic. And I don't, I don't want there to be, um, uh, again, a value difference or, or a light-dark difference between the two photos so it's harder to blend or it looks funny when it starts blending. I'll come in with this one later and place that on top of my foreground and start brushing in some of those um, lighter areas that I want. Uh, if needed, I, I, I think I'll prob I probably will because this one just seems a little bit too dark. But um, Okay, and then... Again, I'm just this is a little bit more reactive, and and by reactive, it's just again subjective. So I'm I'm looking at it and just kind of trying to judge what I want, and I don't go crazy with contrast right away. Um, contrast is usually the last thing that I end up doing. So again, I'll just kind of come in here, and maybe or usually brighten up my shadows. That's that's usually something that I do. But again, it's just how much. I brighten those shadows and highlights, or sorry, shadows and blacks, how much I brighten them just depends on the individual image. This one has lots of brighter values in it, so I don't push it, but some of my night images, I really push it um, quite far uh, just to brighten those up. I don't think I need to, to really adjust my highlights too much. There's enough detail in the highlights here that I don't need to bring any back. I like the little sunburst that's going on there. And my saturation, texture, clarity, dehaze, all that stuff I do after I've blended everything. So basically I'm just, just looking at, <clears throat> excuse me, highlight shadows, whites and blacks, um, kind of within my basic kind of camera raw adjustments for right now. And then, I, so again, I'm gonna skip over that one. I probably won't load that one in. Then I'll look at this one. And again, same type of thing. So I'll, maybe I'll just brighten up those blacks just a little bit and maybe bring my whites down and when i do my whites i look at my highlight areas so i'm just looking up here at my highlight areas and i'm grabbing those whites and bring them down and i just want to see the the detail that's kind of getting brought back into some of those areas and then that would be it so i hit done uh jump back over to bridge i use bridge bridge is um kind of my go-to for it does take a long time to load these nefs and to give me previews but bridge is usually my go-to if i if I need to go to film strip, then I can film strip and, and kind of see those bigger versions um, of the images or click on them to see if they're in focus. But it does take a bit to generate those those high resolution um, previews. But once it is, then you can kind of, again, check your focus. You can zoom in and zoom out within the, the little loop here. Um, so again, you can kind of go and work your way through and, and check those out. So, um, but I do like essentials because it allows me to see everything really quick. So uh, these would be the ones. So these two are the ones that I would merge together. Um, I don't know. No, I'm going to do this manually. And then I would open those in Photoshop. So I'll just go uh, Tools, Photoshop, Load Files into Photoshop Layers. And it takes them all and loads them into a um, its own layer. Or sorry, um, one file with three different layers. This might take a second.
Perfect. So now there's a couple different ways that I, I kind of go about this. The first thing I need to do is I need to readjust my canvas size. So I usually do that with my crop tool. So I just grab my crop tool, make sure that there's nothing up here under ratio. So I'll just clear that and then just give myself a little bit extra room on the top. And that allows me to then start moving my, my layers around with my, um, uh, my move tool here. So this is my, these two are my foreground ones. This one here is going to be my sky. So my sky, I'll move up. The other thing that I do as well, so I'm just gonna hide this one. I'm gonna move, open up this one again. Those two are, are exactly lined up, which is good. So I, I really don't wanna try to avoid moving those. I'll move the sky to match these because these are already lined up because I shot with my tripod um, and there's just a subtle difference in exposure. So when I'm lining up my, my horizon um, between my two shots, I'll, I'll throw a guide in. And if you don't see the guides, it's just window or sorry, view. Uh, rulers and it shows your rulers and then you can just use your move tool arrow tool and just grab a guide out of there and drag it down um, and then I'll turn my my sky on here and I just use that to uh, make sure my horizon's straight so it's going to line up nice and then I use it just as a general position so you can see here it's a lot easier just to kind of line up that than to try to line it up then what I do is I, I turn that over to screen or lighten and I just double check and then uh, here I don't think I need this um, guide anymore because I have it lined up so I can remove that guide it should let me remove it might not because I'm not in yeah there we go uh, and then I'll zoom in again you can see I'm a little bit off here so then I can tweak those and that's just um, your blending mode changing it to screen I'll check this far side over here it doesn't look too bad and then I'll check this far side over here you'll see it is off a little bit and that just does happen with um, just the optics of the lens because they're shot, um, just go back to normal here. So because this is shot up, the distortion is around the edges here and it distorts it a little bit different around the edges. And then when I turn this one off, the distortion's happening differently up here. So there, you'll never be able to get it to line up exactly unless you're shooting with like a 50 or 70 mil and higher, um, then there's less distortion and you'll be able to line those up a little bit easier. But that's not to say that they still can't be lined up. So uh, I usually try to do that with um, just edit uh, auto align layers and it just automatically aligns them. And I, and I wanna um, let it do auto for now. Sometimes I'll just click reposition if I don't want it to kind of create them really distort the image too much. And it didn't, what happened here? Yeah, so it didn't know what to do. So I had these two selected, yeah. It really didn't know what to do there. So again, it's just sometimes it's great, um, and then other times it just really doesn't know what to do. So I have to do this manually. Um, so there's a few different ways to do this. So I'm going to go over to uh, screen again here, and then I'm going to go to edit, and I'm going to go to puppet warp. Um, actually, I think actually warp might be able to do it. So we'll try warp first. So warp is just, um, you can grab corners and start distorting them. And each one of those corners has a handle to then kind of distort the image. So uh, it's a great way to, to make, you know, to make things line up if they're not lining up. So here I'll grab this edge. I need to bring this and stretch this over a little bit here. I'm still a little bit off there. Uh, let's see what it looks like down here. So this needs to come up and over. And this needs to be so I think puppet warp is going to be the way to go here I'm just trying to get that horizon to match I am I guess I am going to be blending it right on the horizon maybe right above the horizon so it might not be that bad I can actually grab this metal middle section here and pull that over a little bit as well yeah so this side's not too bad at all as it comes across yeah actually it's not too bad I think this might need to be moved down a bit yeah just down a tiny bit well, maybe we'll do both. So then I hit the check mark there and it it, um, it changes the image. And I'm not worried about what's going on down here because it's just the sky. This one here is just the sky that I'm going to be using. So the other way that I'm, I edit is just the puppet warp. And it's really weird. If you've never used it before, it is strange. Uh, if you don't pin your corners and you grab it and start moving it, it's just going to move the whole image. So if you pin in one place and then grab the other and start rotating, it's going to rotate it around that one pin. But if you start adding more pins to pin the image in place, and that's all you're doing is you're sticking and making sure that no matter what I do over here, all of this is staying in the same spot. So I'll, I'll go in and 
and kind of make sure I'm pinning around the areas that I want to edit. And then once I have those pins down, then I come in and do my fine tweak actually. Let's go Command Z here, let's pin it up here. And then I do want to stretch this out just for that little edge to match. And then I probably will move this up just a tiny bit to match there. What does the rest of this look like? You have to be careful though, because you can get your horizon to do things like this. Um, so you do have to be careful with, with how you're you're tweaking and, and just again just those subtle subtle kind of tweaks happening there lining that up and the rest of this doesn't look too bad it might be just a bit off along here so i'll be pushing that over pushing this oh. yeah no that won't work so i'll leave that alone yeah i'm gonna leave the rest of it alone and then just hit OK here. So it, does, it doesn't really do like a ton, but it does kind of tweak and just, if you do have one or two air, small areas that aren't quite lining up for you, because of the lens, distor lens distortion, again, it's great to just come in there and um, and tweak it to get it to line up. And it just makes it a little bit easier uh, for this stage. And th this stage is the blending, so I use layer masks to blend those. So I'll go and create a layer mask down here at the bottom within my layers. Um, and then I use brushes. So, uh, you know, I'm an artist, so I tend to use brushes more than selections. Um, so again, it's 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 a great way to blend layers, but I, I do it freehand and I do it with those brushes. Uh, I'll turn my, my opacity all the way up to 100%. And then I'm on a Mac, so it's control option will give you this shortcut to change your brush size. So left and right will change your brush size and then up and down will change um, the edge hardness. Uh, if you can't change the hardness, up and down will change the opacity within your brush. But so for here, for right now, I just want a soft brush just to get the blending started. Then I'll go and assess, and I'll assess my clouds probably aren't quite lining up, which I'll probably pull that down a little bit with a little bit of a harder edge brush. So here, and then the other thing I'll do is I'll make my image smaller now because I know that's where it's going to be capped at, right about there for now. I can get rid of that, or I'll clone some stuff into this to fill it up to make the sky a little bit, uh, a little bit bigger. Um, so yeah, so I'll just kind of zoom in. You can see there's some ghosting happening here in my clouds. So here I have two kind of cloud versions, and then up here there's some kind of ghosting happening. So I want to get rid of that. So I'll go back to my layer mask, and this time I'll paint with white, and that will bring back that um, that layer adjustment. So I'll, I'll bring back. You see, you can see how much of those clouds ended up getting ghosted. Uh, so I'll come in across here and just, just work in my clouds. I, I don't need to worry about down here too much. Um, I can even make a little bit of a harder edge brush. Not not too hard because I don't want it to uh, create a line. Um, but you run the issue with creating lines within your images if you use a harder edge brush. Um, and you can see as I get closer to this edge, you can see how my sky is a little bit darker than my foreground image. So I'm starting to get this little hazing happening here. So I'll want to make sure I... I remedy that as much as I can. So I'm going to turn my opacity of my brush down here uh, to probably around 50%. And I'm going to go with a big softer brush. And I'm just going to subtly, and you can see how, how that creates an easier blend, um, the softer brush. And I don't have that glowing happening or that hazing happening too much anymore uh, between my sky and my horizon. Um, and again, that just goes with um, you know, as, as much as you want to shoot these images with the same exposure and do the same editing before you before you blend them together, um, just the nuances of the lens, because I have that, that little bit of vignetting that happens around the edges, uh, it might be different at the top than it is at the bottom. So again, that, that will affect those subtle areas that I want to blend together um, that aren't quite lining up in value. And so I just kind of um, overcome that by changing my brush size and um, my opacity within my brush and the harder or softer edge brushes. Um, so yeah, so I think here I need to make a decision now. I need to decide whether or not I want to do this and crop out that extra little bit of space, which I don't think is going to make a big issue. I want to see what this looks like in a, in a pure square one-to-one -one proportion. So I think actually what I might do is I might actually add a bit to this image just with the, the healing or the clone tool. I usually start with the healing to see how it works. Yeah, because I want this to be square. I'm a big Instagram user. Again, if you haven't, it's just Jeff Visual Art um, on Instagram is my handle. So J-E-F-F -F and then Visual Art uh, just on Instagram. So you can go check that out if you haven't already. So what I do here now is I'll, I'll fill this in and I'll 
while I have another layer. So I'll create a brand new layer here. This one's going to be healing or clone or fix. Um, these just little things that I do to the image to kind of fix up. And you'll see, you know, my lens is a little bit dirty or my sensor. So I do have a, a few spots and I do tend to shoot. Um, my f-stop is usually a little bit, uh, let's see where I was at with my f-stop for the sky here. I'm oh, f11. So I do have, um, it allows me to have lots in focus, but it also allows the dirt to be in focus as well. So it doesn't get blurred. If I lower my f-stop, then that dirt gets blurred out and I don't have to clear it out as much. But again, it's a little bit less sharp of an image and um, the focus is a little bit harder to control when you're shooting in those low f-stops. Plus I'm shooting snow with the sunset. I don't really need to have a really low f-stop in order for it to work. And you can even see my ISO is at 64 as well. So I'm just jumping back over to here. So that's that my healing one. I usually try to deal with the top first. So I'll go to my healing brush, um, not the spot, just the regular healing. And that's the one where if you hold down option, it, it allows you to source where you're, you're gonna copy from. So if I hold down option, click here, and I'm gonna source from that area. And one of the big things that I try to do is I try to line up my features. So here, there's not much going on, it's fine, but maybe up here, there's a couple features. So I'll reset my, my clone point or my healing point and just make sure that, that I'm having things that are lining up with each other. So the edge of this cloud will extend up here and I'll just make sure that, you know, those little things line up. So it looks like it, it kind of continues off into, um, off into the distance there. So, um, and then I check for um, mist blends. Uh, so the healing brush, it the way it works is if I grab, say here, you'll see it's gonna copy that over, but it doesn't do a direct copy of this area. So here you'll see my little star down at the bottom where it's copying from. It doesn't do a direct copy. What it does is it copies the detail over and tries to blend it in with the background. Whereas the clone tool is a direct copy. So if I use the clone tool here, you'll see it's a direct copy. There's no blending happening. It's a direct copy from one area over to the new area. So with the healing brush, it usually is easier to do because you don't have to focus on values. It will automatically blend those values, but you just gotta be careful because sometimes it, it does um, create these little blotchy kind of areas. And in this case, it didn't. Looks really good. Maybe one little spot here that I can come in and maybe fix a little bit right there. It's not too bad. And, and my screen's a little bit dirty, so I do move my, my image around a little bit just to double check and make sure um, that I'm not missing. And you'll see I, I do that quite a bit. Now that I'm moving down into my um, trying to find little spots that are on my lens, um, you know, I, I don't know if that's one, but I'll get rid of it anyway. Might remind me of one. You see there's one right here. So again, just kind of choosing the um, the area that's beside it and, and kind of cloning over it from there. Actually, it's not too bad. There's a few, there's another little one there. I'm just looking for little circles um, that are showing up and, you know, the sky might not be too bad, but the clouds I'll probably have, you know, the majority of them happening in the clouds. Sometimes they're kind of hidden a little bit so it's a little bit harder to see so it's usually why I kind of do this like I move I kind of shake it a bit I don't know why but I just kind of shake it around a little bit to to give myself um, I don't know just a kind of a better view I don't know it's really weird I think I started doing it because oh, there's another one over here so get rid of that one um, I think I don't I don't know why I, I think it might just be because like every once in a while light will catch my my monitor and I'll just end up with little spots um, that I see so instead of like stopping and, and checking to see if that's on my screen by rubbing my screen I'll I'll just kind of move my image around and, and if if the spot moves then it's on the photo if the spot doesn't move then it's a spot on my screen uh, and again I should I should always make sure my my screen's nice and clean but um, you know, I, I'll snack on grapes and stuff like that um, around my, um, sorry, I just want to fix one thing. Yeah, around my computer. So sometimes it does. Or I'll close my computer screen because I'm on a laptop and I'll close the screen. And then sometimes the oil from the keys will actually um, show up on the photo a little bit as well. Or sorry, on the screen a little bit. So here, this is where I, I do use my clone tool sometimes. So here I'm going to clone the exact horizon. And I'm going to move it over and you'll see it, it gives a preview inside of the clone tool. So I'll just line my horizon up 
And I'm just going to fix this doubling. So this is a little bit of a doubling that's happening here. So it's just doubling that's happening kind of within my alignment wasn't the greatest here. You, you can see there's a line there. There is. I'll, I'll try to fix that up with my, my healing tool before, um, before I finish off. Maybe just getting rid of some of this as well. And that's the good thing about, so the clone tool is great um, for doing direct copies and giving you a nice hard edge. Um, if I try to do this with, and it might work, there, Photoshop is getting better at, um, you know, trying to figure out what what should stay a hard edge line and what shouldn't. Uh, but I want to make sure this is a little bit smaller, so I'll copy from here, move that up. And again, you see that it's it's not too sure what it should do here. So it's it's trying to blend these values, and it's not rec recognizing that I want that to stay as a hard edge line. So again, I'll, I'll come back to my clone tool. Um, if I find that happening and I'm gonna have to do my sky separate here So I'll come down. I'll do the ground here And I'll just make sure that this is blended nicely I'm not seeing a, a glowing edge here And then what I need to do here is I need to try to find the same value that's going on So it is it is a little bit more challenging here uh, That's not too bad. I still see a little subtle change or Yeah, I won't be able to do that. Actually, I might be able to do it later. So I think that's not too bad. So I think I'll come in and fix this up as best I can here. Just coming across. And I do see, it's hard, but I do see a, a subtle line happening right here. And I don't know if you can see it on the YouTube video, but uh, there is a subtle line there. So there's a couple options here. What I can do is I can turn my opacity down on my, um, my clone tool and come in and just go over that one spot and basically what it does is it just blends it just blends it. it just makes it less apparent so you can't quite see it quite as much and I don't see it now but sometimes because I haven't done any of my contrast or color editing yet I'm just still compiling the image it's, it's almost like I'm still at the point where I'm taking the photo because I'm, I'm finalizing you know the photo itself see that happens that, that bugs me sometimes when I'm I'm really really literally zoomed in so far that um, I'm worrying about a single pixel change. But anyway, I should stop doing that. Um, yeah, so again, that, that kind of just comes around and lets me fix it. Um, I'm at the point now where, you know, if I didn't have to fix any of the image um, or blend layers together, this would just be like loading it into Photoshop. So I'm at the point now where I've, I've compiled all of the different images that I want to use and they're aligned except for the bottom one here which I might brush in I don't I don't quite know yet um, and then again I've fixed the, fixed the edge and cleaned up any of those areas I should actually double check the foreground here and make sure there's no little spots but I think it's relatively good here yep, nice and clean the snow is I'm getting rid of these two little sticks here keep it nice, nice and clean but uh, yeah, again, overall, it's not too bad. Take a look at it. Good, I like the lines. This is a good use of thirds here. And the lines that are kind of pointing towards the sun are nice. Even this kind of diagonal that's happening here and the diagonal that's happening here, it's almost being reflected. You almost have a little sense of, again, not exact symmetry, but just some subtle symmetry within the, the diagonal lines that are happening uh, within the image. Um, yeah, so I think now what I would do is I'm going to see about maybe blending this one in. So I, I'll bring this one above all of my other layers. And you can see there's a line there up at the top. But that's not what I'm going to do. I'm just going to use it to maybe brush in um, maybe some shadow areas. But I don't even know if they're really needed here. I don't think, I really don't think they're needed. So I don't, I think I'm going to get rid of this, this guy. I don't think I need the exposure blend here. I think this is really nice. I'm just going to switch over to my, my photo working space here. Um, so I'm just looking at my histogram here. I want to go to, um, and then I want to change it from colors to RGB or luminosity. One of the two, I, I like using my histogram for lights and darks. So you see, I'm missing out on a few highlights here and I'm definitely missing out on some, some darks, but I think those darks can be introduced with, um, a curves layer or, or some shadow work in camera raw. So I'm going to delete this layer. I don't, I don't need it. I'm going to get rid of it. So the next thing I do is an overall curves layer, and this is an overall curves, um, and it just allows me to, I hate that this is, 
I want, I'm sorry, I just, I want, I want that to stay in here. But I want this to be a little bit smaller. So let's go back to compacted view, there we go. So my histogram is still in um, luminosity or just how bright or dark the image is. And um, it's just a little bit more compacted. And that allows me to see all of my properties here. And when I'm editing photos, this is basically my workflow. And I, I do kind of go into my brushes every once in a while, uh, my history palette and things. But I, I like those to have those com uh, collapsed. Um, these ones here I like having open all the time because I always access them. This one's good because it gives you um, the properties of whatever layer adjustment you're using. So if I go into all of these layer adjustments, if I go to, to levels, it'll pop up here. So each one of these, it will show up in my properties, which is great. So I'll turn those off. I don't want that one. So here what I do, and your histogram is really neat. It represents the light and dark values within your image. So these are, these are the pixels. Uh, vertical is the number of pixels. And then horizontal is black to white and all the gray values in between. So I have a few pixels that are, you can see right here in my histogram and you can see right here in the histogram back here, that's the sun. These few pixels that are being shown there, that's the sun itself being represented in my histogram. And then as I move away from there, I have a few of these values that are in the 10% gray. There's very few of them. And then I bump into the you know 20 or 30 percent gray. There starts to become more. And then as I get into the 50, 60, and 70 percent gray, there's tons of pixels in this image that are in that 70 percent gray range, somewhere in there. So again, your histogram is great at representing that. And just you, usually I can look at an image, or sorry, look at a histogram, and and know how bright or dark the image is, uh, know how much contrast is going on within the image, and just have a better idea of just tonally what the image might look like. Uh, so again, that's um, the histogram is there's so much information, and it's great to have your histogram turned on on your camera when you're shooting, because when you when you load up a shot and you have a sun or a bright sky and it's throwing a big glare over the back of your camera you can't always see if you're overexposed or underexposed but if you have your histogram loaded up and you all of your pixels are within the middle of that histogram then you know you have a proper exposure and you're good to go but if your histogram's pushed if your histogram's pushed over to the to the left side you'll know your image is too dark and you end up clumping darks together which you, which you want to avoid or the other way if you if your histogram is has got a spike on the highlights, you'll know that you're overexposed and you have too much, too many brights in, the, in that area. So usually what I do is I'll grab the arrow here and just move my darks over just a bit. And I, this is why that I shot that other one away because I can darken this without it um, kind of degrading the image at all. I'll brighten up my brights just a bit and maybe just subtly add just some subtle contrast. And it's usually just really subtle something like that so again a lot of times what I'll do is I'll, I'll turn my my visibility on and off of my adjustment layer that I just did and it, you see it does sharpen it up a little bit and it does make the colors just a little bit more intense which is good and that's usually what I want now this is something that is relatively new that I started doing uh, I guess new within the past year but I've been ed editing within Photoshop forever um, but if you go on a Mac you go command option shift E it, what it does is it takes all of these layers and flattens them into one. And it is different than going Merge Visible. So if I go Merge Visible, it merges all of them into one layer. So I don't have the option to go back and look at all of those other adjustments that I've done or kind of creating. So if you go to the flyout menu here too, the, the three little bars on your layer, layer menu, and go to Merge Visible, but hold down Option or Alt when you click on that, it does the same thing. So you'll see here that it creates that um, that brand new layer. There's no nothing different, but it's a it's a basically taking all of these, merging them together, but merging them in a new layer and still keeping those original layers. And I like doing that because um, what I'll do is I'll do some adjustments to this, and then I'll create a layer mask, and then blend those into the original. Um, so I do that a lot. Used to I used to do levels and curves all the time, mainly curves um, for a lot of these adjustments. But um, I've, again, somewhat recently started doing filter, camera raw filter, and lo force loading this back into camera raw. So now this is all put together. Oh, my mouse is dying on me. I have to use my tablet. Plug my mouse in. Oh, that's horrible. But I have my drawing tablet hooked up, so 
it's just as just as easy. Um, so yeah, so this this whole image is already it's been put together and compiled. Now I can come back in and edit the image kind of you know in in segments the way that I want it. And I'm going to edit the sky a little bit different than I'm going to edit the foreground here. So um, I'm just looking at the sky. I'm not looking at the ground. Um, and I might just bump my blacks up a little bit, like brighten them, that is. Um, and one of the reasons is because I like this dehaze. I really like this dehaze. It sharpens, but it adds contrast at the same time. So you can see as I pull that dehaze in, it starts adding and brightening up, or sorry, adding contrast. I do a little bit of texture, a little bit of clarity as well, but you'll see that I like these darker, richer sky clouds, um, but I don't like it what's happening down here. So that's why I do edit it in, in segments. Um, maybe I'll pull that dehaze back a little bit. And I, I sometimes I'll come into my color mixer as well. Maybe those blues, jump into my blues, maybe I'll desaturate those blues just a little bit. Maybe jump into my reds and my magentas and bump up the saturation of those just a little bit. There's probably some purples, probably more magentas. And then maybe um, go back to my overall. And I might be able to bump up my yeah. So one thing, and, and you just have to be subtle with this. So one of the things that you want to avoid when you're doing your hue saturation is clumping colors together. So you can push it like this and, oh, wow, that, that, that looks amazing. But what happens is you end up with these, where is that? there we go. Uh, you can see around the sun, there's a big clump of yellow pixels. Now there's a big clump of yellow pixels here. And it's one of the no-nos whenever you're dealing with any editing within Photoshop or any program that is, is you want to avoid clumping pixels together. So you want to keep as much detail as you can within those areas and avoid kind of creating these clumps of color or value. So you can do the same thing. If I come in and darken this, this is way too much obviously, but you'll see now I have these areas that are just clumps of, of the same value of pixel. And I know there's detail in there, but again, you just want to try to avoid getting rid of that detail. Um, and again, values, colors, it's all the same same type of thing. So I'll, I'll double check my sun here. That's not too bad. I think this was already kind of clumped together. But, uh, yeah, so it's not too bad. I'm liking the sky. I think I'm going to go a little bit darker up here, but I have to do that separately. So I'll go OK. And then it loads it back into Photoshop. So you'll see now it's different. So now this layer is different because I've I've applied a camera raw filter to that layer. So I do like it, but I think the orange is a little bit much down here. Um, so I'll, I'll brush it in. So creating a layer mask, very similar to what I did down here, creating a layer mask. And this time though, I'm gonna hide all of that adjustment. So this layer, I'm gonna hide everything. The way these layer masks work is white will show this layer and black will hide this layer and show what's underneath. So if I fill the entire, if I go to my paint bucket, and fill the entire mask with black, it hides everything. So now if I turn this on and off, nothing's happening because it's all hidden. And that allows me to come in now and paint with white. So I can come in and I'm gonna zoom out. Whenever I do these type of things, I, I usually zoom out, um, bigger brush, and just kind of paint almost outside of my image. And I have my stylus right now, so I have pen pressure turned on for my brushes. If you do have a stylus, oh, I don't actually. So, pen, no, I want pen pressure for transfer. Yeah, perfect. So this allows me, and usually when I'm dealing with pen pressure, I bump up to the 30 or so. If I'm not, if I'm just dealing with my mouse, then I work around the you know 15 or 20 percent range. Uh, pen pressure just allows me to go. If I push really light, then you know just not very much paint's coming out. But then as I push harder, uh, more paint comes out of the brush. I guess that makes sense. So again, that allows me to come in and brush in those adjustments to just the sky. So you'll see now, even though they're, they're relatively subtle, uh, but allows me to do that selective adjustment just to the sky. And having a big soft brush allows that blending of that, um, that new layer blends will blend nice into the, the layers that are underneath it. So I'm going to finish off my sky here by coming in and adding another curves layer. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to watch up here. What I want to have happen here is I want this to be a little bit darker up here. I want those blues to be a little bit richer. So I'm going to darken the overall image. Maybe something like that. I'm going to bump my 
highlights back up to roughly where they were. The clouds are too dark here, so I might go a little bit brighter. Actually, no, I'm going to leave it. I just won't paint as much of that in. So it works the same way. Um, layer adjustments that have layer masks, they work the same way. I can hide all of that adjustment by clicking with black. It hides all of this curve adjustment that I've just done. And then I can come back in and paint with white to bring back some of that just adjustment, but selectively, just where I want it to happen. And in this case here, it's just across the top. And there it shows up, so you can see that adjustment. And, and basically, I'm just kind of, you know, adding a richer value to the sky, creating a more of a gradient across the sky, and fo focusing more attention down here. Um, you'll see as I click, even if I do both these at the same time, as I click on them, it, it just pushes a little bit more attention down towards the middle of the page um, by creating a little bit less contrast up here, almost creating a vignette style um, of an image kind of coming down. So I do the same thing again, go and flatten everything, but hold down Option or Alt while I merge visible. Creates a brand new layer, go back into filter, camera raw filter. Let's go check it out. So here what I do, I want to add texture to this, but I think I'm going to do it Actually, I might do it here. So let's brighten my darks a little bit. I'm not going to brighten my, or darken my highlights here. I think I might even maybe brighten them, but I might do that after I added some contrast and, and some dehaze. So dehaze is usually pretty good. A little bit of clarity and texture for some of the texture in the snow. I don't, like, there's something about how much blue is happening here. So again, I might jump into my color mixer real quick scroll down to my blues and just maybe desaturate some of those blues just a bit. And while I'm at it, I can maybe bring out some of those reds and maybe some of those pinky purples, magentas, in the snow a little bit. Um, again, just to add some subtle, maybe take out some cyan a bit. Oh, where's my cyan? It's aqua. There's no cyan. Hmm. There's cyan. I didn't even see what it is there. It looks like cyan. I guess they're calling it aqua. But. So again, just kind of maybe subtly taking out some of those blues. I just don't like, like even, like you see up here, it's, it's just too, like here's nice because it's a subtle gradient and it's a little bit brighter. But here it's just a bit too, too blue. Uh, so just jump back over to my basics here. So dehaze is nice. Overall saturation just a tiny bit. And then maybe some contrast. But as I'm doing this, I'm noticing that it is getting a little bit too dark. So I'll come back and, and now react to the fact that it's getting a little bit too dark and maybe brighten up my shadows or my blacks a little bit. Maybe, maybe push that exposure just a tiny bit to brighten everything. Do some subtle contrast here. Maybe bring up my highlights. Maybe my, now I can probably push my DAs a bit more maybe somewhere on there and it, it's something that um, I don't know if it is maybe you can let me know um, in the comments but I don't think there's a way to hide everything here like I, I know I can revert back to um, where is it so I thought I could revert back to reset to open my previous settings yeah so I think here would be the two where I could bounce back between but I, again I don't um, I guess I could, so let's try that. So let's go, where's that right here? And reset to open, and then Command Z. Okay, good. So that's the original, and that's the new one. And, and again, I'm not looking up here. This is too much. I'm just looking down here in the sky, or in the ground. So you can see how it does add some texture, some clarity, um, and again, some some brightness to that part of the image. And then I hit OK. Hit OK. That's the thing about the tablet. Sometimes it doesn't register um, the kick the click with the with the pen. So just like before, new new layer adjustment, fill that with um, black. So another shortcut for that is just command delete on a Mac or control backspace on a PC and option delete on a Mac or uh, Alt. Uh, backspace on on a PC <clears throat> and that fills with your foreground or background color. So option delete will fill with my foreground color and then command delete will fill with my background color. It just makes it easier so I don't have to go to the paint bucket, click, go back to my brush all the time. I can just kind of 
So same thing as before, I'm gonna brush in those adjustments. Now, the beauty about doing this with these kind of brushes and stuff is I did find that this was a little bit too dark right in here. So I can make the majority of those adjustments here and, and brush that in on my layer mask. Then I can switch over to black and I can come in now with a smaller brush and maybe bring back some of the original in some of those dark, those areas that are too dark. It didn't quite work, I have to bring a little bit more of that in. It just desaturated a little bit too much so it looks a little bit too gray. And again, most of editing itself is just, is, it is reactive. It's understanding the tools and then just kind of knowing the, knowing the ways, different ways that you can go and fix fix any issues um, that might happen. I also like zooming out on my images um, as well. So zooming out and looking at it small to get a better sense of composition and what within the image is demanding more attention. You know, and I, I think this is a really good balance between the sun, the clouds, and the, the snow top in the foreground. Kind of creates a nice little triangular shape to kind of bounce around and look at um, with the most of the contrast being here. But and then the lines line up nice to kind of create some nice diagonals um, happening within. So here what I would do is just um, finalizing the image now, um, maybe just a little bit darker. So same thing as I did before, curves layer, a little bit darker, fill that entire curves layer with black, and then go back in with a big white brush and just introduce, again, just maybe some stronger darks. Um, it's, it's lagging a little bit here, but just some stronger darks maybe around those corners. You know, I like vignettes um, when I'm working. I like having some subtle kind of vignetting happening. Uh, it just, again, it, it just pushes more attention towards, um, you know, those, those focal point areas. In this case, it's really these three objects here that are the main kind of focal point. Um, so I'm just kind of de-emphasizing um, some of those, those edges. And, and it might not seem like a lot when you're, when you're doing it, um, but when you kind of look at it after, and you turn that on, the uh, visibility on and off, you can really see that, um, you know, it's just starting to push a little bit more attention towards towards the back there. And I, I am using my stylus, so it is a little bit, little bit different. And then lastly, I'll look at my histogram. So my histogram looks pretty good. I can't push my highlights too much more or the sun's gonna get way too bright. And that's, if you look at it from the original, which is way back here, you'll see that the sun itself isn't, isn't super bright but after all of the adjustments that I've done, I now have a clump of pure white there with my, my white. And I can come in and I can try to fix it. So this is dark. This one here, add a little bit of fringe to it. So I can come in here and again, painting with black will erase this layer adjustment. So I can come in here with a big round soft brush and maybe a few clicks to kind of remove some of that adjustment. It's not too bad, maybe a couple more. And again, you can kind of see that little dot there. And then I'll just work my way down. Yeah, I think I think that I think I got it with that one. Even though my my um, you can still see those highlights here in the histogram. I think it looks pretty good. I'm not worried about you know some of those some of those whites starting to clump, clump together where my where my sun is. It also just makes the sun look a little bit bigger than than what it may have originally been. I think this is the layer where it happened on, right here, where it ended up getting a little bit too bright. I should have noticed that on this one and maybe come in and, and fix that uh, within within that layer. But it is, well, maybe it's not too late. Let's see, let's see if I can kind of come in and, and bring that back with. There it is. It's a bit brighter here. Yeah, so it looks like it was fixable. Yeah, perfect. Actually, no, now I'm getting this like weird like fringing happening. So I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna bring it back to that nice bright sun, which is almost there. I'm just looking at this to make sure that little dot disappears. That's where it happened. Right about there, yeah, perfect. Turn these on again. And yeah, so my histogram looks good. I think that's probably all I do to this image. I don't think it needs to be brighter or darker. Sometimes when I load it on my phone, if I get, if I'm posting it on Instagram, then I'll, uh, I'll look at it and, and go, oh, you know, maybe, you know, maybe it is a little bit dark. So then I'll just do a quick overall brightening of my shadows um, within the Instagram um, edit tools there. So 
Uh, so yeah, so again, I'd save this and then save it as my, so my final, so let's go. Center. And then just find where my nature working. And then I'll go and resize my image for Instagram. So if I change that to pixels, oops, nope, pixels. And my width is 1080. Change that, wait for them to be sun saving, and then save as a copy. Oops, cancel. I'll save as copy. And JPEG. Remove copy from the name, save it. Perfect, and then close. Close my phone. Don't save it. You don't want to save it because you've resized it, so you don't want to save it again over top of that. And then again, I'll, I'll transfer that over to, um, I keep trying to grab my mouse. It's charging. But, uh, so again, I'll transfer that over to, um, there it is. And I'll transfer it over to my phone and post on Instagram from there. So um, if you haven't already, like and subscribe. I'm going to be doing one of these hopefully weekly, but I'll try to do that for every image that I kind of go through. So all of my images now that I start editing, I'll go through and, and include some of these night images as well. Um, this one's a little bit more kind of extensive. I do some, um, you know, just some different editing to, uh, to the sky than I do to the ground and, and maybe running a little bit more noise reduction which is something i didn't i feel like i didn't have to do in that other image is run a lot of noise reduction but i do i do come in and do some noise reduction as well you can see there's my my process there for this one i think maybe a little bit more saturation and maybe just a bit more noise reduction on this one actually i don't know if i did i did i don't think i did any noise reduction on this which is not like me so same type of thing flatten that layer I have um, top topaz noise, I love that. But I'm not gonna do it, it's gonna take a while. Um, but again, I would run some noise reduction on that. I love that um, that tool. But uh, Okay, so again, um, if you haven't already, like, subscribe, let me know in the comments how you, um, how you feel about uh, the edit. And if you look forward to seeing more of them, I'm gonna try to post, um, every time I do an edit, uh, when I post the photo, I'll, I'll kind of you know, uh, mention that it's in my YouTube channel, how I went about editing. And I'll do another video too that I'm going to post to the top of my YouTube channel. Um, that's just kind of basically like, like how I shoot. Um, the fact that I'm, 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 I'm doing heavy Photoshop work here. I am I'm like, the amount of Photoshop work I'm doing is quite extensive. But I'm trying to overcome the limitations of of the technology so when i was standing there out in these spots um, you know the sun was throwing a nice beautiful magenta color across that across that uh, uh that snow it was and, and everything was blue so i am bringing that back to the way that i seen it um and the way that it, that it you know that it was maybe just a little bit of interpretation there and, and just pushing it a little bit further um, but most of the early Photoshop work that I, I've done is just merging mo more than one photo together uh, to get it to all kind of work together. So I, I'm going to create another video again, just, just kind of outlining, you know, my process when I shoot and um, again, just um, my editing, overall kind of editing, not techniques, but um, outcomes, like what I want to see as an outcome. And I usually know when I'm shooting, when I'm shooting something, I usually know how I'm going to edit. Um, and go about editing it. And that just comes with time. The more you do stuff like that, the more, um, the faster or the more accustomed you'll get to knowing these, these issues or um, these editing techniques while you're shooting and knowing, almost knowing in your mind the process that you're gonna go through when you sit down at the computer um, instead of just kind of experimenting and reacting. Um, but yeah, okay. Um, yeah, that was the first good one and hopefully it wasn't too long. We're looking at an hour, what? Okay, anyway, ciao.